Hi film guys and girls, today it's all about sound design and how David Lynch masters it. You might know this famous director from Twin Peaks, Mulholland Drives or Eraserhead. We tend to not really appreciate good sound. The sound shapes the movie experience. I'm a musician, I uh, started playing instruments, recording, mixing and mastering them and writing songs like almost 20 years ago. My background is music. I think it would be nice to tell you guys and girls more about sound and sound design and if you like this episode please click subscribe and um, so you won't miss next week's episode anyway have fun and here we go it's often overlooked but remember it's just 50% of the movie and you can shape the sound by great sound design make up your mind before you write a story and before you direct a story and film a story what's the role of the sound and how you design the sound and how do you do this in post mixing and then recording what is sound design by the way everything that's recorded um, while filming is just the dialogue you don't want any cars passing by traffic or nature sounds you need to add those sounds in post when someone when someone walks over pebbles, over grass, when someone ruffles his or her clothes, the Foley artist does this in the studio to make it more richer. For example, in The Walking Dead, if you punch a zombie or break a bone, it sounds pretty weird. You can't really do this in real life. You can't break anybody's bones, right? If you beat a zombie or some other guy or girl, they punch a piece of meat or they break a bit of broccoli, so it sounds a bit like... <laughs> Let's come to David Lynch and his film Eraserhead. This was his first film. In this film he lets noises color the mood and the atmosphere. Most of the time you don't see where the noise comes from. This noise is divorced from what you see. This makes it very intriguing. So you can create a background noise that does not steadily and constantly um, inform you about what was going on. So you can focus on creating an atmosphere and tension and some mystery. Throughout the film there are no natural sounds of birds or animals and instead the viewer hears the phenomenon called room tone. David Lynch describes this as the sound you hear when no one talks and no bit the, the silence between words and sentences. He wants his sound designers to add a certain musicality to a room tone. He used for example an organ and other stuff and different pieces of slowed down music. So as a sound designer for David Lynch you're piecing together bits and pieces like um, you explore this movie and David Lynch also wants to uh, wants the audience to piece those clues together and sound design is a way to do this. And so the viewer is able to draw his or her own conclusions and you know piece all those clues together and make his or her own experience and he has total faith in uh, people that they will pick up on a cue or on a sound or an emotion which makes it very powerful and uh, important and personally I don't really understand why um, so many filmmakers nowadays don't really care so much for sound it's just all about in my opinion just slapping a cool song on this you can tell so much by just using a sound and um, Yes, David Lynch does this in a really great way. You can use contrast. If you use a very loud tone after a very low tone, the loud sound becomes more uh, threatening or more powerful in contrast to the, uh, to the other ones. For example, in my first short film, there were two women living in a flat and there was no noise going on except um, the noise of a refrigerator or the hum of an electronic light bulb. And somebody would knock suddenly at the door. The knock at the door didn't sound very nice, so I layered three gunshots, mixed them, pitched them, and mixed them a bit louder, so you would really knock, jump, almost jump out of your seat when you listen to a Box of Darkness, the scene when someone knocks, and this is the effect I was going for. You have to experiment a bit and to go for your desired effect. So this leads us to the only one rule in sound design, there is no rule because you should be free to experiment what sounds good and what fits your narrative, what um, supports your desired effect should be used. Kurosawa did this next tip with visual images in his films. He always used some kind of movement, like the grass was always moving or the wind was always moving clothes or trees or clouds. So I have a constant movement, you're constantly on the edge. <laughs> Um, I think Werner Herzog also does this in Battle Tenenum, where Nicolas Cage is, um, you know, 
interrogating a suspect and in the background you have a highway passing by. So there's nothing going on in the scene, but you still see those cars passing by, passing by, and this makes it so adventurous, gives the scene a new way to look at this and to build tension without really knowing it. And you can also do this by sound design. Um, but have a certain kind of movement always there. For example, you have this in Breaking Bad, when Walter confronts Hank in episode 509, and they go to this garage, and there's this kid outside playing with this, you know, electronic car and this miniature car, and, you know, using the remote control and speed it up and slow it down and stuff like this. And you always have the sound as a background. Other people would just, you know, just ignore this, but they written this into the script, so, they have, you have this random random noise while they were talking and it also adds so much to the tension of the scene, which is a great scene by the way. So anyway, this has been about David Lynch. Now we're going to talk about sound design. I'm going to give you some tips I read in the Sound Effects Bible. The Sound Effects Bible is written by Rick Fears. I'll put a link in the description below. This is a very good book. So here are a few guidelines if you want to mix, record or just do great sound design. When it comes to recording, switch off your mobile phone, always check your meters because meters never lie, never fiddle with the knobs, change the level while recording. When you're recording you should have one steady level, you should have done this before and tested this. You check your levels very often and always keep on rolling. Uh, even if you have some kind of little accidents, you can use those accidents. If you want to try to find sounds, do so with the eyes closed. This is that's very interesting. You should also care about the way you hold a prop. If I put my prop up here, it sounds different. Point the mic directly at the sound source. So if you close the door, point it at the hinges or the door frame. Oh, and always um, check your equipment before you go into the field. If you have enough batteries, the mic is working. Oh, and generally speaking, don't move the microphone and don't change the meters when you're recording. You should do this in your test recordings. Mixing. Make sure that every sound is recorded pure before you experiment with it. So the quality should be good and then you can experiment. Use the compressor sparingly to keep the natural dynamic. Compressors are there to influence the output. Mostly it's just um, some kind of ceiling, so everything is should be even. There's no big high uh, jumps in the peaks and no low things. Everything is compressed into a neat file. You can also shift focus. You can make one element stand out in the mix if your position is like this within a contrast or um, just lower the others and so um, and give the one instrument you want or sound design you want more in this mix a boost so it's all will also this contrast will also heighten the importance of this one sound so it's also about psychology you can layer sounds i told you before this and you can also pitch them you can pitch them up a few semitones or tones and then use the same sound again the more you layer your sounds the more you should is use certain pitch settings and then you can layer them and the sound fattens up or thins out oh and by the way try to mix sounds that don't belong together this is very exciting use the room tone loop it and use it as continuity in a scene when dialogue appears. You can also use the room tone as a voice sample to feed into your reduction program like waves, noise, meter, whatever. Quick side note, by the way, ambient sounds are very important. They are extremely useful for filling a room and uh, create a mood. They also give away subtle hints of location like traffic or birds chirping. For one minute of ambient sound, you should record like five minutes. The lowest recording level should always be minus 40 decibels. Oh, and always record in stereo. That's been it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I'm starting a little poll here. If you want to um, have a say in next week's um, episode, take part in this poll, determine the theme or the topic I will be talking about next week. So that's been it for today. Thank you very much for watching and listening. So enjoy the summer, stay curious and keep on learning. <laughs> Bye.